Okay, so this is Chapter 8, Lesson 3. And in the last lesson, we didn't get to talk about Lewis structures, exceptions to the octet rule of resonance. The lesson was specifically on bond energies. So we're going to cover 8.10 through 8.12 in this lesson. So let's first start by defining Lewis structure. The Lewis structure shows how the valence electrons are arranged among the atoms in the molecule. And the definition of the octet rule is basically an atom being surrounded by eight electrons. Now in Regents Chem, we didn't really spend a lot of time drawing structures, and the ones that we did were basic structures. We need to turn that up a notch in Supachem, and you are expected to be able to draw not only more structures, but more complex structures. And in doing so, one of the biggest things that I find students have a problem with is determining where the elements go in a structure and how many bonds they should have. So here, some basic rules is to count the total number of valence electrons, including electrons related to polyatomic ions, and then distribute one bond to all necessary connections. Distribute your pairs of electrons, and then if you have any extra electrons, they say that they go on the central atom. And then if you need to add either double bonds or triple bonds to fulfill an octet, then do so. To me, that's just more like um, drawing it and figuring it out. That all makes sense. You know that they each can't have more than eight. You know that everything really wants eight for the most part, except for hydrogen and helium. There is another strategy that we can use to help us. I call this the want has guide. And this generally works for any molecule that has electrons in S and P sublevels. Once we get into larger molecules with D sublevels, this isn't going to work. So this is how it, we utilize it. We write how many valence elect, uh, uh, electrons it wants, and we subtract how many electrons it has and we divide by 2, and that equals the number of bonds between the atoms and the molecule. So using HF, something very simple, let's see how this works. H wants 2, it has 1. F wants 8, it has 7. So what I wind up having is... 10 minus 8 equals 2 divided by 2 equals 1 bond. And that makes sense because you know it's H and then you have F. Okay, so why don't you get out another piece of paper because I'm actually going to do about five more to demonstrate this. Okay, let's look at N2, another simple one. You know that each N wants 8, so that's a total of 16. You also know that each N really only has 5, and there's two of them, so that's 10. So in this case, 16 minus 10 equals 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3 bonds. And that makes sense because you know that N has 5 valence electrons, and if it bonds to itself, it has to do so by a triple bond. Remember, I need a total of 10 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This N is happy. 
because it has 8 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8. And this n is happy because it has 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Next we're going to look at NH3. Again, still using the want have rule. N wants 8, it has 5. H has two, uh, wants 2, and there's 3 of them, so that's a total of 6. And they each have 1, and there's 3. So what do we have here? We have 14 minus 8 is equal to 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3 bonds. So I draw my n. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. H comes in here, H comes in here, and H comes in here. Next, CH4. Want, have, C wants 8, has 4, H wants 2, there's 4 of them, that's 8, but it only has 1 and there's 4 of them, that's 4, so that's 16 minus 8 equals 8 divided by 2 is 4 bonds. So C, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then H comes in on each side with its 1. I'm going to do one last one that is an ion. Let's look at NO plus. Want has. N wants 8, has 5. O wants 8, has 6. The plus 1, though, means that it lost 1. So when I do the math on this, I'm going to have 16, and that's going to be minus 11, but this means that it lost one, so I'm going to do minus 10 equals 6 divided by 2 is 3 bonds. So you know that that's got to be a triple bond in between the N and the O. I need a total of 10 electrons, 2, 4, 6, there's 8, there's 10. This is an ion, so it has to go in brackets, and I have to show the charge, the plus one outside of it. Okay, we'll do some more practice with drawing of structures in class, and we're going to get into some more complex structures in the next lesson. All right, so we're going to talk about exceptions to the octet rule now. What happens when you have more? So, electrons, then 8. We call this electron abundant. And this is usually period 3 elements and beyond. And then we have less electrons than 8. And we call these electron deficient. And that usually refers to boron and beryllium. And we'll talk about those. So let's first talk about electron abundant. A good example to start out with is SF6. Now our want has rule is not going to work with SF6 because it is electron abundant. So that means that sulfur is going to exceed the octet rule. Due to its mostly empty 3D orbitals, we can use those to accommodate the extra electrons. So what happens is we're just going to draw S and we're going to have 
our six bond lines coming off of it, these are going to be all of our F's. Now I'm not going to draw in all the valence electron dots of F. So I'm going to draw my lines. So each one of these lines represents two electrons. I'm just not going to draw 36 dots. That is too time consuming. Okay, so let's make sure we have the right number of electrons. You know sulfur has six and you know that you have six fluorines and each has seven. So that six times seven is 42 plus six is going to equal 48 electrons. So we need to make sure that we have a total of 48 electrons. We have 48 electrons on this molecule. Each one of the F's has two, four, six, eight. And then we have that six times. So six times eight is 48. And notice how there is a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 electrons on sulfur. And that is because of that 3D orbital. It can hold those extra electrons. All right, let's look at one that is electron deficient. Let's look at BF3. So B has 3, plus you have 3Fs times 7. That's 21, and 3 is a total of 24 electrons. So we have B with the 3Fs. And I have a total of... 2, 4, 6, 8, 8 times 3 is 24. So that's one structure. Or it could be drawn like this. So now I've got 2, 4, 6, 8. 8 and 8 is 16 on the bottom 2, and 2, 4, 6, 8 on the top. That's a total of 24. I still have 24 electrons, but in the second drawing, boron has a total of 8 electrons. So one would think, one would think that this drawing would be the preferred drawing. But, in actually observing reactions with other molecules, it prefers the electron deficient configuration. Now, sometimes when we draw a structure, we will look at something called formal charge to determine which structure is the preferred structure. That's coming up next. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is resonance. And that's going to lead us into a discussion about formal charge, and then we'll be done. Resonance is when more than one valid Lewis structure is possible for a molecule. And resonance structures are a representation of a molecule 
that is actually an average of its possible structures. So for example, let's look at the NO3 minus ion, the nitrate ion. Let's use the want-has rule. So N wants 8, has 5, O wants 8, but there's three of them. So that's going to be a total of 24. and it has 6, that's a total of 18, and the minus sign tells us that it gained 1. So we'll add that in. So we have 24 and 8, which is going to be 32, minus 18 and 5 is 23, plus 1 is 24. So 32 minus 24 is equal to 8, divided by 2 is 4 bonds. So we know that N O3 has four bonds. So let's think about that. If I have an N in the middle and three O's coming off of it and I need four bonds, it means that one of them has to be a double bond. So this is what I wind up having. I have N double bond OO and I need a total of 24 electrons. So I've got 2 in the double bond, 4, 6, 8, I'm going to do it this way, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24. And it's an ion, so we need brackets and charge. Now, that's one structure. Another structure could be where the double bond shifts to the bottom left. So I still have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 24. Okay, I need my minus sign. And the last structure, I'm sure you can figure that out by now, could be when it's in the lower right. Again, if you want to draw the dots in, that's fine. I'm not feeling it. Just make sure you got a total of 24 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay. Oh, I got an extra one on this bottom one here. Let me get rid of that. There we go. All right. So these are resonance structures. And then what we have to do is we need to draw arrows between them. When you have this double-headed arrow, this implies or indicates resonance. Resonance. So what we're really saying is that if we were to see this molecule in real life, Okay, if I could have it in front of me. The actual molecule, the actual molecule would have bonds that are an average between the single and the double. So here you've got two single bonds, which are longer and weaker, one shorter bond, double bond, which is stronger. And the actual bonds would be the average of them. So it would be somewhere between a single and a double bond in length and in strength. And it's been experimentally proven 
that the molecule exists with all bonds and the strength of those bonds representing the average of these diagrams. And we will practice with some other resonance structures in class. I just wanted to give you an overview of it. Last, we're going to move to formal charge. So formal charge is charge assigned to an atom, and it's derived from a specific set of rules. This is one set of rules. I'm going to give you a set of rules that I find a little bit easier to use. You can gravitate to whatever works toward you. So number one, when we are determining which structure would be the preferred structure, if we can draw a structure more than one way, we are going to look for the structure that has the lowest formal charge. And how do we um, assign a formal charge to an atom or an atom in an ion. First, we take the number of valence electrons typically associated with that atom, and then we subtract the total number of electrons around that atom. And then we subtract the number of bonds connected to that atom. And the best structures are those that have formal charges closest to zero. Now, I find those rules a little bit more difficult to understand. I like to use a formula. So I take the number of valence electrons and I subtract from that the number of electrons in lone pairs plus one half electrons that are shared. And that's an easy... So let's start by looking at the sulfate ion. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So we've got a sulfur with 6, 4 oxygens with 6, so that's a total of 5 atoms times 6, which is 30. Negative 2 means it gained 2, so that's a total of 32 electrons. So intuitively, I would do this, S, and I would take and put 4 O's, right? And then I'd put my lone pairs on my O's. Okay, so let's figure out formal charge. First, let's do it for the S. I'm going to put number 1 by S. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do 1. And let's look at S. S has number of valence electrons. S has 6 valence electrons normally. Minus number of electrons in lone pairs. Well, in this diagram, there are no lone pairs around S, so that would be 0 plus one-half the number of electrons shared. Well, when we look at this diagram, I want you to be able to see this. There are two, four, six, eight. There are eight electrons that are shared. So that plus one-half times eight. So that's going to be 6 minus 4, which is going to be negative 2. So sulfur is negative 2. Now we need to look at number 2. We need to look at the oxygen. All the oxygens are the same. So number of valence electrons on oxygen is 6 minus the number of electrons in lone pairs. Well, one oxygen has two, four, six electrons in lone pairs. So that's six that are in lone pairs plus one half shared. So each, each, um, each oxygen is only sharing 
two electrons. So that's one half times two. So six plus one is seven. Six minus seven equals negative one. So the formal charge on each oxygen is negative one. So if I were to add all these up, right, I have four times negative one plus, oh, this should be a positive two. My bad. This is a positive two. I made a mistake. Six minus four is positive two. Okay. So negative 4 plus a positive 2 is a total negative 2 for the formal charge. Now let's look at the other way that this can be drawn. The other way I might think about drawing this is having double bonds coming off of the S, two of them, because we know that S has that partially filled d orbital and can hold extra electrons. It's electron abundant. So if I still need 32 electrons, I've just utilized 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So here's 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So I still utilize my 32. I should put this in brackets. Same as this. It's an ion. It's just hard when you're doing all that work. So now let's look at the formal charge on these guys. So the formal charge on my S is going to change. So my S has six valence electrons always. It has no lone pairs. And it's sharing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So plus 1 half times 12. So that's... 6 minus 6, which is going to be equal to 0. So the S has got a formal charge of 0. Now let's look at the O with the double bond. So each oxygen has 6 valence electrons minus it's got 2, 4 electrons in lone pairs plus 1 half of what it's sharing. It's sharing 2, 4. It's sharing 4 in the, in the double bond there. So 1 half times 4 is 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So each of the oxygens with the double bond is going to have a formal charge of 0. Now we need to look at the O with the single bonds. Again, each oxygen has 6 valence electrons minus 2, 4, 6. It's got 6 electrons in lone pairs plus one half of what it's sharing, it's only sharing two, so one half times two. So this is going to be six plus one is seven, and six minus seven is going to be negative one. So each of these with the single bonds is going to be a negative one. So let's look at what we have. We have negative one, and negative one is negative two, right? And negative two. plus zero is negative two. So our total, our total here is also negative two. So what a dilemma we have here. Which one is the preferred structure? Well, actually, the bottom one is preferred. And that's because since the two of them had the total same, we look at the individual structures and we have one, two, three, three elements with a zero formal charge and two with negative one, which is lower than the formal charges on the previous diagram. All right. I have one more example, actually two more examples I'm going to do.
Next example is HCN. We know that H has 1, C has 5, C has 4, and N has 5. That's a total of 10. So there's my has. And what does it want? Well, N wants 8, carbon wants 8, and hydrogen wants 2. So that's a total of 18 on the wants. So that's going to give me a difference of 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4 bonds. So we know H only forms one bond. That tells us that there's got to be a triple between the C and the N. I need a total of 10 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8. That means that the last two have to go on the N. So let's look at the formal charge here, starting with the C. Carbon has four valence electrons. It has no lone pairs, so that's going to be zero plus one half of what it's sharing, and it's sharing two, four, six, eight between the triple and the single bond. So one half times eight is four, so four minus four is zero. So this is going to have a zero formal charge. Let's look at the N next. N normally has five valence electrons minus the number of electrons in lone pairs would be two plus one half of what it's sharing and it's sharing two four six so one half times six is three so three plus two is five five minus five is zero so the n is also zero and then lastly but not least is the h h has one valence electron minus zero lone pairs and one half of what it's sharing which is two so that's going to be one one minus one is zero so this is definitely the structure for HCN because all of my formal charges equal zero So the last one that we're going to practice with is example 3, ClO3 minus, there's a little minus sign, so this is an ion. So we've got chlorine with 7 plus oxygen, there's 3 of them, times 6, so that's 18 and 7, it's 25, negative sign means plus 1. So it's a total of 26 electrons. That's my has. What do I want? I've got four atoms. They each want eight, right? That's a total of 32. That's my want. 32 minus 26 is going to give me six divided by 2 is a total of 3 bonds. Should make sense because chlorine is going to go in the middle. And I can put an O here, O here, O here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And maybe this has a lone pair on it somewhere. So that could definitely be one figure. It's an ion, so we need brackets and we need charge. So let's see what's going on. Let's look at the chlorine first. So chlorine has seven valence electrons minus the number of electrons in lone pairs is two plus one half what is shared, two, four, six. So that's times 6. So this is going to be 3 plus 2 is 5. 7 minus 5 is 2. So my chlorine's got a plus 2 formal charge. All my oxygens are next. Let's look at them. Each oxygen is 6 minus lone pairs, 2, 4, 6. There's 6 electrons in lone pairs plus one half what is shared. There's only two shared on each. So 
That's 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. 6 minus 7 is negative 1, which tells us that each oxygen is negative 1. So I have a plus 2 and a negative 3, which gives me a total of negative 1.